Today, I'm going to showcase the best competitive settings for a Chapter 2 Remix, which has taken us back in time, but with a twist. I'll also feature loads of PC optimizations, ranging from basic stuff to more advanced stuff. So after this video, you will get a huge FPS boost and much lower input delay, benefiting any PC or laptop, no matter if it's low end or high end. Starting off in Windows, if you go into Settings, under Display, you want to ensure that you've got your refresh rate on the highest one possible. Make sure to check your monitor settings as well because you may be able to overclock it allowing you to reach a higher refresh rate there also may be a setting to lower your response time back in display if you scroll down to where it says graphics change default graphic settings if you see this setting called hardware accelerated gpu scheduling you want to turn it on to reduce system latency and improve performance and then if you play full screen windowed mode like peterbot does you want to make sure you enable optimizations for windowed games as this will reduce latency once you do restart your pc Oh, and if you click on browse here and find the client itself, this is the name of it. You'll see that it's on the list. If you click options and select high performance, this will prioritize your GPU over integrated graphics, which as you can imagine, you want to do. Then go into power. For most people, they keep this option on balanced as it keeps your CPU clock speed at a normal base rate. And it is the best of both worlds, really. However, you can go into the CMD and paste in this command right here, which will create a ultimate power plan. To enable that, you need to go into the the edit power plan settings where you can actually select it. I only recommend the use of this power plan if you are gaming. If you're not gaming, you should use balanced. Also, while the game is running, I press Control Alt Delete, go into the task manager, and then find Fortnite, right click on it, go to details, then right click on the top EXE, set the priority from the default normal to high. You'll notice as well in the task manager, if you look at the very bottom, you'll see uptime. To your surprise, the uptime may be very, very high, like some of these examples are on screen, like some are just ridiculous. And this is because of a fast start feature, which has become quite the meme. So to fix this, head into power options, click change settings that are unavailable and simply uncheck this option. Now, when you shut down your PC, your PC will fully shut down and the uptime will be reset. Next in Fortnite settings, I recommend full screen for much lower latency when compared to windowed full screen. Resolution, most players use 1920 by 1080 for its high resolution look and best visibility. However, I recommend trying a stretched resolution as you'll get a huge FPS boost as well as bigger looking player models. To set up a stretched res, you've got three different methods, which I explain more in this video on screen. However, the easiest way is to literally change these two sections inside your game user settings config. Frame rate limit, I like to use either unlimited or match my monitor's refresh rate. So if you use a 360Hz monitor, you want to use 360fps in game. As for rendering mode, you want to use performance mode as it provides much clearer visibility as things like grass are removed, which also improves your FPS big time. However, before you do switch over to performance mode, you want to make sure you're on DirectX 11. If you are on Nvidia, you should see at the bottom a low latency setting. Now most people have this on either on or or on on plus boost as nvidia state that this does reduce system latency for myself on plus boost works really well but i've heard a lot of people just use on and i've even had some people have it off because they've got fps drops so it's a setting you've got to test out for yourself if you do choose to use it make sure to apply and restart your game then don't forget to switch back to performance mode to keep that low latency setting in the background in addition some players boost their fps further by using potato graphics which essentially lowers the graphics more than you normally can I made a tutorial all about this on screen here. I'll have a link below. For view distance, I recommend using at least medium as this is the minimum view distance. You can see items on the floor. Although a lot of people do like having this off for the extra FPS. Moving on, if you Google your mouse's software. So for example, if I use a Logitech mouse, I'll just type in Logitech mouse, then software. If you then open it up, what I recommend doing in here is using a high DPI as this can prevent pixel skipping where your aim may suddenly jump slash skip a pixel which can occur more so on older generation mice i do think at the very least though it is a good idea to raise your dpi above 400 as that's quite an outdated dpi that's also why a lot of pro players these days are using at least 800 to 1600 mouse dpi if you are concerned though about raising your dpi and losing your in-game sense you can get your exact in-game sense easily just head over to my website and use the edpi converter tool 
Next from that, you also want to avoid using RGB effects on your mouse. Now, I know these might look cool with the various animations and lighting effects. However, research has found that they do add slight latency. Running an RGB effect slash animation can take a great toll on the MCU as it requires a lot of processing power and will delay other processes. So you're better turning off those RGB effects. It's also why most modern competitive mice like the Logitech G Pro Super Light 2 does not come with RGB. Their older mouses did used to have that, but the new ones just don't. Next, we've got keyboard optimizations. Now, in your keyboard software, you'll see an actuation point, and for this, a lot of pros tend to set this to the lowest one possible in order to get the fastest input. As, as you can expect, the lower this value is, the more sensitive it'll be, and the higher the value is, the less sensitive it'll be. So most pros tend to put this to the lowest one possible to get the fastest actuation point. You also may have a rapid trigger setting and this basically eliminates the second slowest element in input latency return key press travel before key activation this rapid trigger setting dramatically changes the actuation and deactivation point and your keys will actually activate before you intend to press them and deactivate when you intend to let go and you've got some settings you can play around with here you also may have an additional setting that can lower your input delay even more you can see here this cuts off one ms which is pretty good keyboard movement i I recommend using these settings on screen or having it off in this season. Game settings, make sure firstly you are using your local region as you want the lowest ping possible. Auto confirm edits, um, if you have it off this means you manually have to confirm each edit which equals 3 steps in total. Edit auto confirms the edits for you which equals 2 steps in total. Reset auto resets the edit for you that also takes 2 steps total. And having it on both auto confirms and resets the edit for you equaling 2 steps in total. For replays and energy saving, I recommend having all of these settings off to get even more FPS. Hood settings, the reticle ammo indicator adds a visual ammo counter whereas having it off shows nothing. Damage numbers, list will manually list the damage dealt whereas cumulative will automatically add it up for you. Reticle damage feedback adds these icons to showcase the type of enemy. Hit only adds a hit marker and off will show none of that feedback. Audio settings, I highly recommend using the high quality setting if you have got a decent modern headset. Although if you've got a low end PC and a low quality headset, you might want to use low as this setting can apparently decrease performance slightly. Under subtitles, you'll see options. Inside here, copy exactly what I've got. You want to turn the subtitles off. You want to make the text size extra small. You want to make the text color white, the text border on non, and then the background opacity on clear. And that right there is a little trick used by Bugger to slightly boost your FPS. So be sure to give it a go if you haven't already. Also, make sure you are using visualized sound effects as it's what every pro is using for good reason. Basically, a visual sound indicator that points you to different things happening in game like footsteps of enemies and stuff like that. Next, if you want to download game updates faster, open up the Epic Games Launcher folder, then locate the engine file inside, paste this command. And what this does is it increases your download speeds on the Epic Games Launcher so you'll download game updates way faster than before. From there head back into the Epic Games Launcher folder. You then want to open up saved. Then inside here you want to look for some web cache folders. Now for me I've only got the one but you may see these other two folders that are on screen right now and basically what you want to do is highlight all of them and actually go ahead and press the delete button to delete them. This could potentially solve the issues that may prevent you from actually launching and playing the game itself. Next from that, head into the install options. In here you'll see save the world, which is the specific game files for that. If you don't play it, disable this setting. High resolution textures, these are required to make the game look a lot more beautiful in game. But if you disable this setting, it'll give you a slight FPS boost. DirectX 12 shaders, these are required to use the DirectX rendering mode. If you don't use this, and use performance mode you should disable this setting and then you've got pre-download stream assets which i like to keep enabled because if you didn't know this pre-installs all the assets when you join the lobby which prevents the assets from being streamed when you encounter them in game so overall if you copy these exact installation options you will get more fps after head back into the epic games launcher then go into settings at the top right you want to scroll down to you see desktop notifications and you want to disable both of these options as when they 
they are pushed out by Epic Games, they can cause FPS stutters in game. After that, you can scroll down to find additional command line arguments. And if you tick this, this is optional by the way, you can try pasting in these different commands for different benefits. After, head into manage where you should also verify your in-game files before playing any new season to remove old outdated files. Moving on finally to the best Nvidia settings. First off, make sure you're using the latest drivers, especially if you are on modern PC components. Most people these days use NV Clean Stall. It's a free app that removes Nvidia bloatware by allowing you to customize and select what driver components you want installed, removing certain bloatware like this on screen. However, I myself don't like to mess around with my Nvidia driver components as I myself do actually use them. So instead, I like to just head into my GeForce Experience app or even better, the new Nvidia app, which I'll talk about later. And I like to just download the latest drivers via clicking that green download button. Although older PCs may benefit from older drivers. Oh, also inside the Nvidia app, I've been seeing a lot of pros take advantage of this simple GPU overclocking feature. All you need to do is download the Nvidia app. You can head into settings, about, and tick the early access box. That'll then initiate the latest update to download and install, where you'll notice a new section called system. Inside there, under the performance section, you'll notice a new automatic overclock feature that allows you to overclock your GPU in one single click, which Nvidia state that once you do enable it, they'll perform a scan to test your graphics card's capabilities over the course of 10 to 20 minutes. They recommend that you leave your PC idle while this is performed. Then once the scan has finished and your GPU has been overclocked, you can expect similar results to this on screen, where you can see you'll get improved clock speeds and in turn higher FPS, with minimal risk too, as Nvidia state that automatic tuning won't damage your GPU, nor will it void your warranty. The worst thing that can happen really is your PC becoming unstable, which if it does, you can simply deactivate the overclock by literally just unselecting it and it'll go back to normal. Next, you want to head into the Nvidia control panel, go into manage 3D settings, and you want to copy all of my settings that are set up in this video on screen in the manage 3D section. Inside the app section, under installed apps, you want to go through all of these and uninstall any that you don't use. So for example, Microsoft OneDrive, I do not use that, so it will be getting uninstalled. However, don't go too crazy with this. You only want to uninstall something that you know what it does. Like when it comes to these files right here, the Visual C++, um, you definitely don't want to get rid of these as they'll have some sort of purpose with some software. Furthermore, if you do use an app, but you don't want it running in the background, you can click on the three dots there, go to new advanced options, and then you can basically stop this from running in the background via clicking on never. And this will also lower your overall process count. Oh, another thing in apps, if you go into startup, you can also go through this and turn off apps that you don't want starting with Windows. Again, don't go crazy as for some stuff, you should leave this on. Next, you want to go into gaming under game bar. Make sure this is disabled as I've heard that it can actually cause stutters. I myself like to permanently remove it by going at the PowerShell, run it as administrator. This command will uninstall the Xbox game bar from your system completely. You've also got captures too. I like to go ahead and turn this off and we've got game mode. This is something I really like and I do use now these days as I feel like it does make my frame rate more stable. Then we've got accessibility in the visual effects where you can turn off the transparency effects. And as you can imagine, it turns off those translucent effects, which could give you a slight FPS boost. There's also animation effects as well if you don't want those. I also like to go into the run box and type in temp. I then like to select all of these and simply delete them. I do this again with percentage sign, temp percentage sign, and yet again with prefetch. Then type in system properties performance.exe and this will open up the visual effects tab. If you click on adjust for best performance, you'll notice it unchecks all the set ends. But what we need to do is tick these five essential ones, which I'm doing on screen right now to get the basic functionality from Windows. It's just more stripped down without all the fancy animations and stuff like that. From there, we're going to type in services. And basically what we're going to do in here is disable some of the services to lower our overall processes in Windows. It'll basically be stuff that has no sort of use whatsoever and you will rarely use, like the wallet service right here. Now, if you do actually use this, you obviously don't want to do it. But if you literally just right click on it, go into its properties, then head into the startup type and disable it. That's literally all you need to do to disable a process slash service. And that's been the best competitive sentence for Fortnite Chapter 2 Remix. If a video did help, please drop a like and subscribe for more. Also, please consider using my creator code in the item shop if you do buy that battle pass as that would help me out a ton.